Hello, hello everyone and welcome to today's live session all on men's skin and aging tips. Now the question is, are there differences between the way that a man's face and skin ages compared to the way a woman's does? And the answer is, drum roll, yes. There are absolutely a few key differences between male and female skin and aging, not only to the face, to the hair, to the eyes, the jawline, but also to the rest of the body and the skin. Now, what do you think that some of these key differences are attributed to? Well, last time I checked, men don't go through menopause. <laughs> Women do. Women go through perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause, which results in shifts in hormones. And in particular with estrogen, when estrogen declines, elastin also declines as well. They sort of go hand in hand. That's why men kind of cruise through life with the Clooney effect. They get the salt and pepper hair. They get those distinguished crow's feet. And for women, we're like, what is going on? Why do I feel like I aged overnight? Especially between the ages of 37 to 42 is typically when women will see a bit of a switch, almost like this aging overnight phenomena. And if you are experiencing that, if you're listening to your woman, it's not all in your head. These are differences between uh, how we age and men age. They don't have that shift with the estrogen and things like that as women do. But the difference with men is testosterone. Now, what happens when men's testosterone decreases as they age? Well, they can get a little soft in more ways than one. And also hair loss can start to come into play. There's also a genetic consideration with that too. But when testosterone falls, that's when the muscle mass will also fall as well as being a little bit soft. And some hair loss can start to occur. And also energy levels and, and all of that. So those are the key differences between men and women. Now let's talk about some of the, and keep your questions coming. I, I warmly invite questions as we move along here. And what are your questions about the differences between the way a man ages and the way that a woman ages? Let's get into some of the characteristics of the face that changes as we age. Let's go from the top down. So we mentioned how men can lose hair. Well, women can also experience hair loss too. And over the last few years, this thing with hair loss has been happening. You know, why am I losing my hair? Whether that's, you know, post getting something or not getting something, it's, I would say it's, it's kind of part of the aging process. However, when I look at my father, he is 70, he has a full head of hair. So and just for those of you out there, I got some good genes running in my background. Uh, my father has beautiful hair. Yes, it's gone silver. It's gone gray. It's, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's full. He actually gelled it on Father's Day, and uh, he is really happy about that. He's like, look at my beautiful hair. I'm like, yeah, Dad, you got the best head of hair ever. And so I get it from uh, my father, too, my full head of hair, potentially. But what can we do about hair loss? Well, number one, get your hormones checked out, and also make sure that you're leading a life with a decrease of oxidative stress. What do I mean by that? In our environment, we get exposure to toxins every single day. I wrote a paper on this, on oxidative stress status and its impacts on skin aging. Where do those toxins come from? In my research, primarily those toxins that we get exposed to every single day come from our air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, and food quality. You've probably heard of those anti-nutrient foods out there that actually can deplete your body of minerals. And then there's foods that are more rich in nutrients and foods that say have had a lot of things done to them to alter them. And then that might not be so good for you. But then there's this whole other category, yeast, fungi, heavy metals, 
mold and parasites, an accumulation of, of these sort of growths or things that can accumulate in the body, but also contribute to oxidative stress, which is your toxic bucket. Now, what do we want to do to slow aging for all of us? We want to keep this toxic bucket as empty as possible. So starting there is really key. Something else to consider is also using hair growth stimulating products. I have a few really great options on my skin shop. They're really well priced. They're as clean as possible and they work. I did a consultation with Michael just the other day and he relayed that when he went to his barber that she noticed that his hair was getting a little bit fuller, which more full, which is fantastic. And, you know, his buddies were asking him, what are you, what are you doing, Michael? Your hair is looking great. And so that was great for him to see those quick wins. Sure, you can do other things for hair restoration, including hair transplants and using technology. Dr. Alan Bowman from the Bowman uh, Medical Institute in South Florida, he is one of the leading experts on hair loss and hair restoration and scalp health. And uh, yeah, he's a wealth of knowledge as well. So there's things that we can do in the clinic. Um, there's also things like PRP that have shown promising results as well. But I would say reducing your oxidative stress, getting your hormones checked out and balanced, and potentially using hair growth stimulating products every time you wash your hair, which I did earlier today. And just to also care for the scalp. The scalp essentially is an extension of your skin. And we kind of forget about this. And for myself, as a double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011, my focus was always on the skin. And then I kind of thought about this for a second. Okay, why are all these people all of a sudden talking about hair loss? And, you know, what's contributing to this? So I think it's our environment. I also think it's blue lights in our home. I also think it's hormones and oxidative stress. It's never going to be one thing that addresses an issue, most likely. It's usually going to be a couple of things that you do because there's usually a couple of things that contribute to it happening in the first place. So let's make our way down. So horizontal forehead lines on gentlemen, again, they can give that kind of like Clooney effect, that distinguished look. But for the ladies, you know, we like a smooth forehead, but I think it's also great to be able to move your forehead, but we do for the ladies want to take care of some of these static lines. And there's some things that you can do for that, um, that apply to both men and women with your skincare day in and day out. What are you doing at home with cleansing, moisturizing, sun protecting, exfoliation, uh, maybe doing retinols and peels, maybe even doing dermal rolling. I teach my dermal rolling tutorial in my tutorials, I don't, you know, do demos and things like that for YouTube in my restroom. That's, that's not my jam. That's not very professional. And by the way, summer skincare tutorials is just about to start. So register now over at the school of radiance.com. Really excited to teach you how to become your own skin pro through seven weeks through highlighting, optimizing your product use from basic to advanced layers. Now, what are some other things that we can do to improve the skin in general? Well, that's going to also come with some in-clinic sides of things. And I love laser technology for creating a controlled injury to basically tell those fibroblasts in the cells to make more elastin and collagen. And when we do say lasers, there's different types of lasers. There's like the Rolls Royce of lasers, or there's the Hyundai of lasers. Uh, definitely some nuances with the technology. So here um, in this session, I'm not going to make specific laser uh, type references, but what I will say is like fractionated technology, something that's basically using a little laser beam to create a controlled injury of column of injury in the skin to then elicit a healing response, which is done through your fibroblast stimulation. And then what happens is it helps to thicken up the skin. So thick skin is a good thing. And you know, having thick skin in life, there's also something to be said for that too. But for slowing aging and maybe even undoing some signs of sun damage uh, from your glory days in the sun, especially uh, if you're a more mature listener, the baby oil and iodine days and those metal ref metal reflectors poolside yeah, that's kind of the bread and butter <laughs> of my many uh, clients over the years and supporting them with their skin health um, and their rejuvenation needs 
So yes, we can do some things in the clinic from a non-surgical perspective, utilizing different laser technologies. Again, I'm going to reiterate, not all lasers are created equally. There's some really terrible technology out there. And then there's some fantastic technology. Now, what's the other thing that we can do as well? There's also injectables that can help to support with forehead lines as well. Not everybody wants to do injectables and that's totally okay. Uh, what you do rejuvenation wise should definitely be aligned with your values, your budget, your lifestyle, but also how full is your toxic bucket? Are your eyes irritated and, and uh, show signs of inflammation, especially with things like allergies. When you notice that your eyes are red puffy and irritated, then that can be a sign that your toxic bucket's full. Sometimes pollen can do that, mold exposure, eating the wrong foods. Your eyes are going to tell you your, your eyes and your skin are actually quite the window into what's going on internally. As we make our way down, the lines between the brows from focusing on whatever type of work that you do, or perhaps you're very expressive in your communication. You might be raising your eyebrows up all the time. You might be furrowing your brows, especially if you're having a, a tough conversation. Uh, but I'm a fan of micro gestures. I actually feel like this conveys a more powerful form of communication. So that when you do raise that eyebrow up, there's a little bit more power to it than being overly expressive all the time. And we all know those people who are just really like intense with the way that they communicate. And we also know those individuals who are a little bit more stoic. And when they do communicate and change their tone a little bit or raise their eyebrows up a tiny bit, you're going to pay attention because they're typically like pretty kind of stoic and cool, calm and collected. The lines between the brows, that's something that pretty much men and women both experience. Little tip here is side sleeping. Sleeping on your side is going to squish your face and actually potentiate these vertical lines on the skin, like between the brows. But also what about the eyes? The number one thing that my clients, my male clients in particular ask me about is what do I do about hooded upper eyelids or dark circles or lower eye bags? What do I do about this, Rachel? My first research paper was actually on an eye rejuvenation algorithm that I published in a medical journal. And what I like to suggest for, in regards to like the algorithm of how to approach rejuvenation, health first and foremost. And then looking at your lifestyle, doing your home care with skincare, adding in some retinols and peels, adding in some lasers, and then maybe non-surgical or injectables or surgery if you need it. The deal with the eyes, is that the eyes are the first area of the face to show signs of aging. And actually when we're first looking at someone and we're maybe looking at their level of attractiveness and we're communicating with them, the eyes and the smile are the two parts of the face that we first look at. So spending time rejuvenating the eyes, time and energy, and also money to do so, um, it is going to have a pretty high impact on looking awake. So this is what a lot of my male clients ask me. Yes, my most famous clients are men. And what they say to me is, you know, originally I really just want to look more awake. I have people telling me that I look tired and I'm not tired. And if you're that person that says to somebody else, ah, oh, you're looking a little tired lately. Like, just go home. Keep, keep that comment to yourself. It's not going to be a constructive comment. And maybe instead of saying, oh, you look a little tired, just be like, hey, how's everything going? Keep it, keep it an open question with how, not making a statement of you look tired. That's not very nice. That's not very kind. And we want to be kind. We want to be radiant. We want to be making really great impressions on those that we connect with. And for people who like to tell other people that they look not great, um, it's typically a reflection of themselves. So if you have heard those types of statements, oh, you look really tired from, you know, even people who you're closest to, I just want you to brush that off. It's simply a reflection of them that, you know, they may maybe need to learn how to communicate a little bit better. <laughs> and they're finding something to talk about and that something is you. Uh, just shift the conversation, be like, can you repeat that? <laughs> That's something that you can do. If someone says something to you that you don't like, can you repeat that? And uh, see how they respond. Let me know. <laughs>
So with the eyes, yes, we get the crow's feet, we get the hooded upper eyelids, we get the lower eye bags and dark circles. Men and women both experience this. Sleeping on your back is going to be one of the best ways to reduce this aging or accelerated aging to your eyes. Another free tip is to not rub your eyes. In fact, uh, when I was interviewing a colleague of mine, Dr. Patrick Yang, who's an oculoplastic surgeon and ophthalmologist, he talked about how rubbing our eyes, this previous episode on the show, can actually contribute to floppy eyelid syndrome. So say, for example, you are noticing you're sneezing or your eyes are itchy, you know, this can be a histamine response. I actually get a histamine response when I drink orange juice, even if it's organic, I just get this histamine response. Foods that are cooked and then you consume them over 24 hours later, they also start to produce histamines too. Maybe you had exposure to pollen and maybe you don't have enough antioxidants on board in your supplements or your diet and your toxic bucket gets a little full. That's what antioxidants do is they help to reduce oxidative stress in the body. These antioxidants kind of go in here, bind to free radicals and then take care of them. So keeping this toxic bucket is great. Uh, if this bucket gets a little full, it'll tip over and then you'll have the manifestation of red skin, dry skin, or eye irritation. That's pretty common or like pain or brain fog. Um, so basically it's usually gonna be a couple of things that contribute to that. So just you know, keep your lifestyle dialed in about 90 to 99% of the time and then the rest of that, you know, have at her, enjoy life, have that cocktail have that treat, but just make smarter decisions of what that type of cocktail is or treat. Um, in regards to alcohol, I don't really drink much alcohol at all. They don't call it spirits for nothing. Uh, champagne, Guinness, or 100% tequila is typically what I'd go for, maybe a sake. And that's, we're only talking like a couple a month, if that. So if you're noticing that you're drinking more than that, you might want to reevaluate it because alcohol just flat out isn't good for you. It, it is a full-on toxin for people that say oh yeah you know drinking wine is great for your longevity says who <laughs> especially with commercial wine being so full of toxins and flavor agents and additives like 80 different additives in are typically added in commercial wine i've actually interviewed the founder of dry farm wines um, this is a cleaner lab tested uh, wine source from the usa and uh, it's Todd White and his products are also on my biohacking page. I have a ton of great resources, by the way, over at theschoolofradiance.com. You can book your one-on-one, -on -one, join my tutorials, buy skincare that's all pre-vetted by me, hair care, also makeup, dermal rolling uh, supplies. And then also the membership is where we go really deep, especially into communication and presentation and body, mind, spirit, energy practices to contribute to you being your most beautiful, high vibrating version. And with that, you're going to slow aging and have a more peaceful, calm life. Because if you want to look great, you also want to be more in this peaceful type of, of energy, you know, peace, love, and joy. The hippies got it right. Those are some of the highest frequencies available. If you're sitting in shame, anger, and fear, then your, your cells are and everything in your body, your stress hormones, it's going to eventually show up in the way that you look. And so we want you to be energized. We want you to be radiant and looking and feeling your best. So also with the eyes comes down to, okay, what can we really do in regards to uh, at home and in the clinic? So at home, definitely cleansing the eyelids. If you get eye irritation, then, or you're using heavily oil-based products or different makeup removers, you can get a blockage of the lash line and the different glands in the eyes. And then that can, you can get things like dry eye and 50% of North Americans actually experience dry eye um, in their lifetime. And so that's pretty high. So there's a couple other things that contribute to that. Air quality, electromagnetics, that's definitely in the research. EMFs contributing to eye irritation and skin redness. We're gonna talk about skin redness and pigmentation coming up here shortly. But the eyes are really susceptible. That's why I'm wearing these blue light blocking glasses because I'm right in front of a couple screens here. We're on Instagram at Rachel Varga Official and also the School of Radiance podcast. I'll be checking those Instagram questions in just a second. So keep them rolling and uh, I'll get to them in just a sec. 
So with the eyes, your skincare, being consistent, cleansing twice a day, making sure that lash line is clean. Uh, I'm happy to recommend a skincare routine for you and streamline that in a one-on-one -on -one session. Just an FYI, my one-on-one -on -one sessions, I'm gonna be really dialing back my availability significantly and probably raising my prices because I only have so much time in a day. So if you're on the fence about booking your one-on-one -on -one session with me, I recommend you book that like right now over at the schoolofradiance.com while I'm still able to offer them. Uh, good things happening behind the scenes, but just want to make sure you're aware that that ability to connect with me one-on-one uh, -on -one to basically come up with your custom cake recipe, your at home, your possibly in clinic uh, rejuvenation plan, all in alignment with your budget, your lifestyle, your values, and all of that good stuff. So what can we do aside from cleansing? Well, you definitely wanna be using an eye cream. Again, the eyes are the first area of the face to show signs of aging. It's the number one question my male clients ask me about is what do I do about the eyes? Keep them clean and keep them hydrated and sun protected three things that you can absolutely start doing now that really isn't going to cost you much and or take much time at all in your day. Now, why do we want to use an eye cream? Well, sometimes face moisturizers are a little too rich for the delicate eye area and you can get these little white bumps called milia. So I do recommend over age 25 to use a separate eye cream and then also follow that up with your face moisturizer really good moisturizers like practitioner grade medical grade products like what i offer they have higher levels of antioxidants and peptides the final formulation is tested so that those agents are also kept stable antioxidants and peptides are not new in practitioner grade skincare when i started in the industry in 2011 we were working with peptides so when you hear oh, this new innovative, you know, skincare product has peptides. It's not new. It's, it's just kind of part of marketing. So you wash your face, you put your eye cream on, you put your face cream on, and then you're also going to be wearing your sunscreen. 100%. You want to wear mineral only sunscreen, not chemical sunscreen. Uh, chemical sunscreen filters, they're not good for our coral reefs. So imagine they're probably not good for you. And they only last about one to three hours and they sting in the eyes and have that yucky sunscreen smell. Ugh. And then mineral sunscreen uses zinc or titanium to give you a longer lasting amount of protection. They don't sting the eyes as well. 10% of all skin cancers actually occur the brows, the eyes, the top of the cheeks and the nose. We think of Hugh Jackman, for example, you know, handsome fella, but you know, he had a skin cancer that was removed on his nose. He was actually quite public about it. He's Australian as well. So, you know, these things can happen to anybody and everybody, even celebrities. And, and you know, skin cancers can become life threatening. So it is a good idea on the high real estate areas, face, neck, chest hands to apply your skincare as well as your sunscreen daily think of these like the high real estate areas and that's also going to really help to slow the impacts of sun damage and also damage from blue light on the eye area and also wear these glasses well, there's other things that we can do too to thicken up the skin to the upper eyelid the lower eyelid including dermal rolling which again i teach this tutorial in in my uh, seasonal skincare tutorials with the summer one happening soon. So join the fun right now. We go live each week and then you can catch those replays uh, at your convenience until you feel like you've mastered uh, the technique as well. So we can do that at home. There's also retinols that are specifically for the eye area too. You can't use, you definitely don't want to be using a standard face retinol on your eyes because you're sure to get eye redness, itchiness, irritation, and probably flaking, uh, you want to be using a specific eye cream and a specific eye retinol, in my opinion. What we can do in the clinic for around the eyes are a couple of things too, both surgically and non-surgically. Non-surgically, I'm a huge fan of, again, laser technologies to thicken up the skin. Now, the trick here is to use the best technology available, you know, the Rolls Royce instead of the Hyundai, and also go to a practitioner that knows how to make that sing. And those recommendations are shared uh, and suggestions to support you in a one-on-one -on -one session. Love lasers. 
thick enough that skin. And then there's also injectables like neuromodulators to basically relax the muscle. So the reason we get like crow's feet and things like that is because the muscle around the eyes is a circle. It's the orbicularis oculi and it's a sphincter. So when this muscle gets kind of like tight and used for your whole life, uh, it can kind of pull the brows down and eyelids and uh, also contribute to fine lines. So yes, when we relax this uh, for crow's feet, it's, it's great. But then there's also eyelid surgery. And sometimes, sometimes surgery is actually the best option and the most durable option. So when I see before and after photos of this innovative eye cream and the before photo, you know, it's got the bags, the dark circles, the hooded eyelids, the crow's feet, and then the after photo, sorry about that beep. That's my that's my um, Bond Charge PEMF mat turning off. Love PEMF technology. Uh, it just makes it feel so good. It's got the red light. It's got the heat. It feels so good. I actually like to sit and work on that. And with, with these eye creams, the after photo, when I take a really close look at that after photo, it's pretty apparent to me that, you know, that person probably had some injectables or they had eyelid surgery because I can legitimately see the eyelid surgery scar. So the first thing, uh, the number one cosmetic surgery performed in the world is rhinoplasty. The second is eyelid surgery. It's more common than you might think. My recommendation there is to see an oculoplastic surgeon, uh, like the surgeon that I referenced earlier. And uh, it's just important that you know that Non-surgical things won't do what surgical things will do. However, the non-surgical and surgical together and your home care can uh, typically re yield the best results. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is dark under eye circles and eye bags and fillers. So my first paper I wrote was basically a paper to talk about not doing teardrop fillers because I was seeing so many issues from it. That's something I took a stand on really early in my career because I was, you know, gaining so many clients from these other clinics that were doing teardrop fillers. So what that's done to do is to basically help to lift the skin in the lower eyelid area so that you don't see uh, the darkness so much. So the skin in the lower eyelid area is super thin. If you were to pull that skin back, like what we do in cadaver labs and put a little piece of paper with say an ink letter B underneath, put that under the skin, you would literally see that B underneath the skin. That's how thin the skin in the lower eyelid area is. So we want to thicken that skin with skincare and sunscreen, and rolling and lasers, not necessarily just put hyaluronic acid filler in that space because it can grab a lot of water, it can move, and you can also get this even more blue tinge to it from the tinnitus effect. And sometimes fillers um, too close to the eyes can even actually make your eyes look smaller. It decreases the aperture or the opening of the eyes. We want open, we want bright eyes. This is actually what looks really attractive. So that's why I wrote my paper on uh, eye rejuvenation was to encourage my colleagues to do less hair trough fillers and to do other things instead that didn't have the high risk of adverse events because nobody wants that. Nobody wants to wake up, you know, a month later, six to eight months later, eight years later with, you know, having looked like they just got stung in the face by bees. And yes, these things can be dissolved, uh, but they tend to last a really long time in the lower eye area because there isn't a lot of movement in that area as well. And you know, you would have seen some celebrities with like this worm on their face. Uh, we've seen, I think it's Kendall Jenner, Jennifer Aniston recently, they have like a lot of edema and swelling in their lower eyelid area. And that can happen if you have fillers there, you know, you've been flying or your oxidative stress test bucket's a little bit full. That's basically what that is. It's just this, the lymph has been blocked in the lower eyelid area. So then it starts to just like look puffy and uh, has, there's edema in the area. So actually in lesson one of my tutorials, I teach you how to perform facial lymphatic drainage, which is really important to do for the head and the neck, because with our body, when we work out, when we jump on our rebounder trampoline, when we do yoga, move around, our skeletal muscle 
is squishing the little lymph node, little squishy balls, and it's pushing that old lymph out. New lymph is coming in. Your body's uh, detoxifying those toxins. Now with the face and the neck, we don't have that same degree of motion. So I would argue that when we perform our lymphatic drainage, every time we're putting our skincare on, it's going to help facilitate lymph drainage and movement and a new carrying in of microcirculation and micronutrients to the skin uh, in general. So the next thing I want to talk about is the mouth and the jawline and the difference with aging between men and women. Men typically get the uh, appearance of deeper nasolabial folds. And if we think of, say, Zac Efron when he got ready for the movie Baywatch, he for sure, in my opinion, was on human growth hormone. He got jacked for that role. And then he also had some rejuvenation. And his rejuvenation to me was really obvious. Um, it was just he was looking too full here. Um, sometimes when fillers are done, you know, fillers have a time and a place, just like everything else in the medical rejuvenation uh, aesthetics toolkit. However, even babies have nasal labial folds. So this nasal labial fold running from the corner of the nose to the corner of the mouth, you still want to have some contour and definition there. You don't want that to be flat because then you can start to look like a monkey and it just does not look right. But that's typically what men are going to notice. They're going to say, oh, you know, my nasal labial fold's full. So sometimes what we want to do is like lift the cheek with um, fillers, for example, and if you look at Ryan Gosling in his preparation for the movie Barbie and his role there, he actually started to look quite feminine. Now, I think Ryan Gosling has been a babe, but he's looking a little feminized in my opinion. So male and female rejuvenation is totally different in regards to the feature projection and things like that. Uh, so I think his cheeks are looking a little too full. I think his lips are a little too full um, and his chin just projects too much. Uh, this can kind of give like a feminized look to a man's face or kind of like a cartoon look. Um, this is the outcomes are always going to be dependent on what's going on with that face and also the uh, technique and application of the product. So there's such a nuance with outcomes with who you see and their approach and their aesthetic. Uh, that they typically do. So always take a look at your practitioner and if they look a little weird, you might look a little bit weird down the line too. So the nasal labial fold, what I love there, your home care, doing some lasers, um, maybe some injectables if needed, uh, but sometimes a facelift is in order. Nothing wrong with that. Now with the lips, men typically don't get lip lines. Women do. Women typically get these vertical lip lines, which is very different. And some of the causes of lip lines are going to be side sleeping. We talked about that for lines between the brows. We talked about that for lip lines, but also side sleeping is going to contribute to uh, nasal labial fold and marionette zone lines. So sleep on your back as much as you can. Have a great NV pillow that you can find on my biohacking page that's just going to put your neck in a really great position. And if you do have to side sleep, it's just going to kind of caress your face just a little bit better than like squishing your face while you sleep. So lip lines for women are often contributed by pursing the lips. So I mentioned before, certain people with different occupations can be like looking and really focusing, but they also might be pursing their lips when they do that too. Like when they're really, when they're really focusing or um, if they're tense, they're going to be clenching the jaw. We're going to talk about the difference with jawline aging in just a second. Um, chewing gum, eating really chewy foods. Also different people that speak different languages will typically experience different facial aging as well. Uh, say for example, here in Canada, we speak English. We also speak French and the, the French language, interestingly enough, is spoken like very uh, much in the front of the mouth. So it does require a little bit more uh, puckering and tension to the lips in order to speak that language. So that's a really interesting nuance. So stop sleeping on your side and stop chewing gum. Those are really uh, easy things. The other, the other thing that I would make to question is, you know, we put our skincare on and our sunscreen, but then we eat, then we drink, then we wipe our mouths. And I would uh, suspect that as we do that, we're wiping off sunscreen that we might have previously applied um, 
to in our upper and lower lip. So using a sunscreen lip balm is I think a great idea. I have one on my skin shop as well, a sunscreen lip balm to just keep up with that reapplication of sunscreen around the lips. So let's move down to the jawline. So you've probably seen these ads on social media for uh, these biting things to exercise your masseter muscles. So if you touch your masseter muscle, it's right at that corner of the jaw in front of the ear and then bite down, you're gonna feel that muscle pop out a little bit. Now, when you're kind of stressed out most of the time, you're probably clenching your teeth. You might also do this while you sleep. So that's why having an awareness of your body, of what your body is doing when you're doing daily tasks is actually really powerful to slowing aging. So even just in the session here, you've learned about so many things to be aware of when you are living your life and communicating or when you're focusing at work to not fur your brows, to not be you know too expressive with raising your eyebrows way up. I see this with actors and actresses. They really emote with their faces. And depending on the type of acting that they do, it can require, like especially those who do say musicals, um, they're very, very expressive with their facial features. And they do actually notice accelerated aging in those individuals and runners. Runners have their own phenomena with aging. And I think it's related to not putting skincare and sunscreen on when they do their run uh, first thing in the AM. So that applies to both men and women. So the nuance here is women's jawlines get bigger as we age. We go from this upside down triangle shape to then a right side up triangle. So we get the formation of the jowls, which in my opinion is primarily the depressor angularis oris muscle, which you can actually pinch this on your face. It's a muscle. It gets big and bulky with talking and chewing or doing this motion all the time. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, right? Those kind of... Those kind of motions are using this muscle a lot. So it's just have an awareness of what you're doing. I used to uh, look after uh, a lot of sick kids and I would do sign language with them. I was a cute uh, ICU peds trach vent nurse. And so obviously these little kids couldn't speak because they were trach invented. So we would do a lot of sign language and I would see my colleagues like being really expressive with their faces. And, and we do this with kids too. And we're very expressive with their faces. However, I would also maybe mention to just have an awareness of what you're doing with your face when you're talking with your loved ones and directing them to do things or showing a reaction with a bid for attention and things like that. But just know that the jowl gets bigger and bulkier, especially for women, not so much for men, but for women. And this can add width to the jaw which again makes the woman's face as they age look a little bit more masculine as well as doing that chompy thing to get more muscle projection and strength and hypertrophy in the masseter. That's not a good thing for women because we really want to keep this upside down triangle look. So keeping these muscles relaxed as much as possible. There are some in-clinic options available for that actually to um, tell those muscles to maybe not move as much for a certain period of time. However, for men, this is a great thing to do, those chomping exercises to keep the jawline looking super sharp. One of the easiest ways that I can uh, discern if a man has you know, healthy levels of testosterone or lower levels of testosterone is, remember when hair loss, body composition, uh, maybe they don't really have much muscle and they're a little bit soft and their jawline has really lost a lot of definition. Uh, those are like visible displays of the male aging process in relation to that lowering of testosterone. So lift heavy, maybe do, um, you know, one to two to three day fast. Those that can actually naturally help to produce human growth hormone. There's lots of information on that. And there's some other things that you can do to um, increase testosterone too. That's not really my wheelhouse, uh, but other practitioners do a lot of work with that. But chomping, I think is great for men to do to keep this masseter looking really strong. Also, you would have heard me um, in talk about before, but I'm going to just kind of like reiterate this to not for jawline aging, to not walk around with your mouth hanging wide open like this. 
When you notice people doing that, I want you to notice what they're like. People that kind of walk around with their mouth open, they're going to catch the odd bug in there. Um, but also just notice, like, do they actually have their lives together? Um, just, I'm just saying. Uh, but having an awareness of what you're doing with your face, with your lips, with your jaw is great. The other thing to mention is if you are a mouth breather while you sleep or during waking hours, you're actually disrupting the oral microbiome in your mouth because we're meant to breathe through the nasal passages in our nose. You've got like little hairs and mucus that like trap things and then you blow your nose. So you don't really want to be a mouth breather during the day, but also while you're sleeping, you're not going to sleep as good too. So that's why people talk about mouth taping, but you'll actually experience accelerated aging and a recession of your lower jaw. If you are a mouth breather during the day, or while you're sleeping, which is really interesting. So having an awareness now moving forward of keeping your lips together at rest and primarily breathing through your nose. And when you're crossing the street, really notice what you're doing with your posture, with your walk and, you know, shoulders up and back. Uh, all of these things will help you appear more attractive and confident. These types of nuances with communication, negotiation, with the way that we present ourselves with etiquette, these are things that I go really in depth onto in the School of Radiance membership. So the one-on-one -on -one is like your custom cake recipe at home and in clinic stuff, tutorials, how to use your products, things like dermal rolling. We talk about hair growth. I show you how to use different hair growth products. And then the membership is like the cherry on top. It's the presentation of it all. And, you know, I've seen lots of beautiful radiant men and women over the years. And I'm always so happy when I come across uh, someone who appears very radiant to me. They usually have their lives together. Uh, they're looking after themselves. They, they, some key values are my favorite F words, faith, family, fun, fitness, and freedom. Those are my favorite F words. These are some common things that I see in individuals who just truly look beautiful and radiant. And also there's, you know, some detoxing things and body, mind, spirit, energy practices that I do, but I'm just not comfortable talking about publicly that I only share in the membership. And this is basically, it's taken me 10 years to observe what certain individuals are doing in their lives to just, it doesn't matter how old they are, 60s to 95, what makes someone more attractive and what's this nuance with radiance that uh, comes into play and in accordance with Ayurveda, I actually have some Ayurvedic statues over there um, not Ayurvedic, but uh, Indian and Hindu that actually Ayurveda has the best description of radiance. In my opinion, it's the electromagnetic projection of yourself into the world and it's a reflection of your body, mind, spirit, energy qualities, and other uh, operating systems with the radiant body being the 10th body. It's this quality of how we show up and the quality of how our organs are working, our detoxification pathways, our hormones, our minds, right? Our energy, our keeping our cells on point. Um, one of the things I do want to mention is a shout out to... Uh, for energy and this is by qualia this is the nad formulation head on over to neurohacker.com forward slash radiance and use code radiance for 20 percent off of your nad we need to consider the uh, the impact of our cells and the energy of our cells as we age and as we age this nad precursor declines and our energy reserves decline so what can we do about it? We can actually consume NAD, which helps to move these different electrons on the electron transport chain, which is basically the membrane of your mitochondria. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of creating energy in the body. So when we have this NAD electron carrier carrying things on the electron transport chain, it tells this proton pump to then make hydrogen ions. Uh, this hydrogen pump to this, then basically we can get more ATP happening in the body, which is cellular energy. And again, that's the NAD product from Qualia over at neurohacker.com 
forward slash radiance and use code radiance for 20% off. That's something I like to take for a little bit more energy as well. And I personally do notice a difference in my skin when I'm taking certain nutrients and eating in a specific way. There's no skin diet. I don't think a skin diet exists. I think that you should be testing instead of guessing the way that you're eating. And a couple of resources for just that on my biohacking page as well. These are the typical things that occur with men's aging on the face, hair loss, low brows, uh, lines between the brows, forehead, looking tired. So hooded upper eyelids, lower eye bags, dark under eye circles, nasolabial folds, and the feminization of the jawline. So when it comes to the rest of the body, men don't experience that same thinning of the skin as women do, primarily because I think perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause, and the changes with our hormones that women experience a little bit more. Now, that being said, uh, you know, I have some good longevity in my family with my grandparents living into their mid-90s. You know, I'm curious if actually having children does lend to longevity. My Oma, which is the Dutch word for grandma because I'm Dutch, uh, she had 10 kids and she lived till 94. And then my other Nana, she lived, I believe, till about 94 and she had two kids. It's just interesting to kind of notice that, you know, women and men go through aging a little bit differently. We have different things happening to our bodies and on the skin of the body, there is a big difference. So women often experience laxity to the inner arms, top of the knees, the elbows. And uh, there's some things that we can do about do with that too at home and also in the clinic with lasers to thicken up that skin. At the end of the day, when you want to thicken, when you want to tighten the skin, it's not just about doing like skin tightening something or other. It's about feeding the skin, protecting it, feeding your body, reducing oxidative stress, maybe doing some lasers, right? Maybe doing some other things too for contouring and readjustment of um, positions of things on our face. But those are all options. It's never going to be one thing. It's usually going to be a combination of things for the most durable results and uh, longevity with them. What you do at home with your skincare and healthy living uh, will also help your rejuvenation to uh, for you to potentially get a better result and also for it to last longer because your body's working at making more collagen as opposed to emptying this toxic bucket. That's kind of why I wrote my oxidative stress status paper because the healthier we are, the better we're going to respond to any type of rejuvenation that we do. So the last thing I want to mention and finish on is pigmentation. A lot of guys meet with me and they say, ah, oh, I got these like red cheeks. I don't like having red cheeks. I get kind of embarrassed. You know, women too. Um, what the redness often is attributed to, well, there can be some a couple of things. Sun damage, a vasodilation of the superficial capillaries to the skin, rosacea, um, but a lot of times we actually see a bit of an uptick with skin redness and irritation at spring and also at fall when the leaves fall and they actually release more mold and things like that, good for compounds in the air and it gets on the skin. So skin care. If you have red, dry, irritated skin, you're probably not cleansing twice a day, probably not doing a double cleanse in the PM. You're probably using heavily oil-based products and you're not exfoliating or using the right moisturizer or using sun protection it is usually one or a combination of those things that I see contribute to skin redness. So what I've found in my experience is in as little as two weeks of just following a basic routine, cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, scrub, whoever started to tell people that have red, dry, irritated skin to not wash their face as much or not exfoliate, I don't know what is contributing to them making that type of um, assumption because in my experience, even just being on a re proper routine, a customized routine for two weeks, uh, we start to see less redness, less dryness, and more glassiness to the skin. It can happen pretty quick, but you don't want to miss out on cleansing, moisturizing, sun protection, and exfoliation. If you're missing out on one of those things, it could very well be contributing to dryness and redness and irritation. 
However, there are some lasers that can actually help to basically the laser, the light is attracted to the reds or browns in the skin and can help to break down that basically like over accumulation of pigmentation, which is pretty cool actually that we can use energy technology to help our skin look more clear and stimulate collagen and elastin. So there's lots of different lasers on the market. There's lots of different settings. There's lots of different hand pieces. So for the purpose of this, I'm just keeping it really broad uh, because certain lasers are only available to certain skin types and there's so many nuances. So I just I have to be careful what I say in this uh, for free online stuff here. But yes, reds and browns can be addressed with at-home skincare to prep the skin prior to potentially doing some lasers and then also to care for the skin afterwards. And there's, you know, some more nuances with that. I have a whole lesson in my tutorials on pre and post tips to help you maximize your rejuvenation. Also seasonally, there are some nuances with what we can do rejuvenation wise in the clinic, uh, depending on each season, there's also some nuances with that too. But with the pigmentation side of things, lots of men ask me about this too. There's even a product that I have on my skin shop that just helps to reduce that accumulation of melanin in the skin and also um, basically help provide a more even distribution of melanin in the skin too, which is really cool and uh, excited about that. Uh, there's lots of clinical studies on that. So those like white patches on the body or pigmented patches, things like that. There are really cool options that are research backed, third party tested, and have been around for almost 20 years now. Uh, these are more practitioner grade products. These aren't the type of products you're seeing ads for. Uh, these are what uh, practitioners offer like myself. Now, what was maybe one more thing that I wanted to mention. We talked about pigmentation, we talked about redness, we talked about fine lines and wrinkles. Hair removal, yeah, that's a good one. So if you say, for example, have uh, as a man, like irritation on your neck from shaving, laser hair removal. That being said, laser hair removal is not permanent. Uh, that's not really like the best way to describe it. It's more like laser hair reduction, but that can be great for those who have um, irritation from shaving on, from shaving their beard. Ladies get facial hair too, right? Uh, we get the whiskers as we mature a little bit. So sometimes lasers uh, can be helpful for that too. And using a sharp razor, I really like the Gillette Mach 3 razor and just use my cleanser. Um, you don't have to use like shaving cream or anything like that because there's usually a lot of toxins with that too. And one final tip I will leave with the gentlemen and also for those of you ladies who have shorter hair is whatever you're doing to the face, neck, chest, and hands, I also encourage you to do to the side of the neck and also the back of the neck too. We tend to forget just how much uh, sun and blue light exposure those areas of the face get. Okay. So I'm going to get to a couple of questions here um, on the Rachel Varga official Instagram. Thanks everybody for showing up. Okay. So taking your questions now, everybody. Hey, Bertie. Oh, that's cool. My dad's name is Bert. <laughs> How often can we use retinol serum daily, a few times a week? Also, are you a fan of hyaluronic acid and vitamin C serum or vitamin E cream? This is a really good question. So when it comes to retinol, uh, there's something that I like to call skin cycling. And what is this? So you have your basic routine, cleanser, moisturizer, sunscreen, scrub. You got to do that to stabilize the skin before you do anything else. You'll be wasting your money if you buy a retinol or vitamin C serum or things like that. If your skin isn't already stabilized, not to mention a lot of people are actually really sensitive to um, vitamin C initially and retinol. So you still need to have those basic products and protocol in play to prep your skin and also after using them to um, then care for your skin appropriately. So I have a whole lesson in my seasonal skincare tutorials on this concept of skin cycling. We talk about how to weave in your basic routine with retinols, with at-home peels, with dermal rolling, with your rejuvenation. It takes me a whole hour to teach that conversation. 
Um, so it just depends how many days a week, right? There's, I have recommendations of how to start, how many times a week, and then how to build up to that. So that's a great question. I definitely cover that extensively in my tutorials and I recommend all one-on-one -on -one clients join at least one of my tutorials so that you have this, you know, additional seven hours of uh, insight into how to really master your basic to advanced routines. So that was a great question, Birdie. And one of the things I will also add is that really good practitioner grade products that are retinol also have antioxidants and peptides and humectants in them to mitigate that redness um, and irritation that can happen from retinol. The other thing, uh, hyaluronic acid, vitamin C, vitamin E, yes, I'm definitely a fan of them. However, not every formulation is created equally. Um, hyaluronic acid can come in various shapes and sizes, and it has to be the right size to actually um, do its thing with the skin. And then vitamin C and vitamin E have to be kept stable because if they're not kept stable, but you see it as like a one of five hero ingredients in the marketing from this product, it can actually become an oxidant and be irritating to the skin. That was a really great question. Join my tutorials for my further insights. Okay, we have Fit Chow, 28. I'm assuming you're 28. Do you think Botox and Sculptor fillers are safe to use? Do they cross the blood-brain barrier? Thanks. Um, so on the free stuff here, I don't get into brand-specific things uh, because it's just not something that I'm able to do in free stuff here. Uh, but I mean, that's a really valid question. Do I think that they're safe? Well, I actually can't say uh, definitively that anything is safe and effective for anybody, right? Same thing with retinol, with the vitamin C question I just had. It just depends. Uh, also, not to mention why I wrote my paper on oxidative stress status. You know, what's the level of oxidative stress in somebody? Are there visible signs of irritation and inflammation on the skin? So these are all important things to consider. There's lots of different brand names of products out there. There's also like the generic name, say, for example, fillers and neuromodulator. It's more generic. It just depends really on what your goals are, what your budget, what your lifestyle is, and what's going on with your skin. So I can't really make that claim of whether or not I feel like they're safe uh, because things like that, like they're, they're proper medical procedures. Like you don't want to be shopping around for that stuff. You want to go to somebody who really knows what they're doing and, and is very experienced. But when done well, you know, some of these options can have really great outcomes. Uh, J Fit Chow 28, love your lip color. Mwah. <laughs> Thank you. That was very sweet. All right. Uh, B Laws Team Train 07 wants to join this live stream. Um, I, don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> your name is a little funny to me. Hmm. All right. Great questions, everybody. Uh, I was able to answer all of them. Love you all so much. Thanks so much for joining this live recording of the School of Radiance podcast, uh, being here live. If you want to attend these recordings live, head on over to theschoolofradiance.com and uh, you can actually just sign up to join these live streams. And I don't usually do these live streams on Instagram, but I decided to do them today. All right, that's a wrap, everybody. If you're looking for some customized guidance on what to do at home in the clinic, different things that can support you on your mission to overcoming um, some of your skin needs and what those goals are, book a one-on-one -on -one while I still have that ability to do so. I'm really going to be uh, reining back my availability coming up for some very exciting reasons. And yeah, so if you're on the fence, do it now. Also join my summer skincare tutorials. I do these live each season. If you're listening to this, the replay, I have a tutorial per pertaining to the season that we're in. Let's get your skin on point, not only on your face, but also your scalp, the rest of the body as well, so that you're feeling confident with having beautiful, glassy, healthy, hydrated looking skin on your arms and on your legs and, and things like that. Uh, so each season, there are different tweaks we want to do with our routines, like the question that I have from Instagram about retinol. There's some things to know um, depending on the season that we're in. 
uh, because things like retinol can actually make you photosensitive. And just so many people use that type of product incorrectly. And then they wonder why they have red, dry, irritated skin. And then guess what? That product that you put your hard-earned cash into goes into the drawer where products go to die. We've all had those drawers. Let's just be real. So becoming a more conscious consumer is truly my intention for showing up here. And, uh, you know, being that sound discerning voice in the um, you know skin and rejuvenation world and then for those of you who want to do more of a deep dive into the ways that we can show up and present this is going to impact your personal and professional lives in a big way that's the membership this is like a no holds barred situation a container where we really go deep on cultivating radiance on various different levels and on lots of things that you would not have spoken thought about before. And so everything is available over at the school of radiance.com. And also uh, the product that I mentioned was the NED product from qualia for skin cellular energy over at neurohacker.com forward slash radiance and use code radiance for 20% off. All right. Love you all so much. Have a beautiful high vibe rest of your day. And I will see you again right here on the school of radiance podcast.